I agree. And it's that hard part of, again, going back to dealing with reasons why and looking at some more of the criminally creative mindsets and understanding mm. what we're dealing with is to touch, to face the darkness, we're going to be touched by it just a little bit, if not a lot. And yeah. having that mindfulness and that resiliency and the skill sets to cope with all that and manage, that's the internal art. That's the hard part. That's the stuff that doesn't look sexy on a highlight reel for marketing. But mm. it's the, that's the most important part because it deals with this issue about how do we carry trauma as as people and more importantly as instructors. So I'm going to segue into uh, a point that I ask every instructor, every coach, is this okay. issue about vicarious traumatization and compassion fatigue. Because okay. anybody who is taught, regardless of what it is, gets burnt out. Mm-hmm. And what if, have you had this experience? And if so, uh, would you like to go into it? And more importantly, how have you found yourself moving past that? Yeah, so I can, I don't understand the first one, the vicarious trauma. Vicar- yeah, vicarious traumatization. When you get, to, it, okay. I simply put it as the weight of knowledge of people's circumstances. When you get involved with people, you get to know mm-hmm. them. You get to know mm-hmm. what's going on with them. You get to know their okay. truths. So for context for me, when I was coaching and teaching, I had a lot of clients and youth clients that were uh, brought to me by way of the behavioral health community and child protective services. Okay. Knowing the circumstance of their mm. case files and participant mm. of it that weighed mm. upon me. And mm. just the same as being participant and viewing the case files with a lot of the battered women that I've had to deal with over the years, the, that knowledge weighs heavily on a person. And mm. as a result of it, that, that chips away at my internal capability of dealing with trauma Mm-hmm. And my, my window of tolerance. And mm-hmm. so with that, I was, my window of tolerance got so full that I had no emotional uh, capacity to deal. And as yeah. a result of it, it spilled over. So mm-hmm. with that explanation, is that something that you're familiar with? Um, oh, yeah. So there is this concept called emotional crossover and mm-hmm. emotional spillover. And mm-hmm. I think that if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, tell me if I'm incorrect, you're talking about like somebody's experience actually emotionally affecting and weighing on you in a pro, like in a yep. long-term way, in a way that it shouldn't be. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Because if I can't, it hurts if I can't help. Right. Mm-hmm. And so in order to, I'm a very like, loving person and relatable person and I just want to help people in this way and so I can't help but get to know them you know and then when they make choices that I can't change and I can't support you know then I have to kind of step back which is so hard as a as a instructor um but when I do that it it is like I can feel I can feel it like a bad breakup Mm-hmm. you know and it's and it weighs on you like you said it, it's it's one of those things that I've tried to avoid um since I didn't know that that's what it was called but I am glad to know because I've tried to create kind of more of a boundary now yep. um with students yep. just to just to keep it keep it in check you know and uh the <laughs> the um other one that you were saying the emotional exhaustion is oh compassion yeah. fatigue yeah. yeah um i think that that is it i feel like i don't get it's hard to say that i get like fatigued of being compassionate it doesn't feel like that so much it just okay. it cuz i feel like i don't lose compassion i just can't display it anymore Okay. You yeah, know, well, I just that, that that works. Yep. Yeah. I just couldn't output it. And it's like I've already said sorry. I've already tried that. You know, and then you start to get into those mental loops of I've already done this, I've done this, like why aren't they getting it? You mm-hmm. know, and you're like, but I, I care about them, they're gonna get it, it's gonna be okay, but you're constantly cycling through that loop. And so feeling compassion fatigue just definitely feels to me like I love you guys, but I can't give it to you. I can't give any more to you today. I have nothing to give. 
Yep, it's that uh, cup mentality. You, you only have so much. If your cup is already full and you add more yeah. stuff to it, it spills yeah. over. That's basically what compassion fatigue is. And it's really easy to get there with our line of work, I think, because like you said, and we've said this whole time that they come in after the fact. Mm -hmm. And with all that baggage and that trauma and it all being so close, relatively speaking, like mm -hmm. in time, um, it's very hard to weep through. Yep. It's very hard to, it's very hard to get past and keep consistent with mm -hmm. your compassion, with your teaching, with your lessons, like all those things, whether they're spiritual or physical. You have to create, you have to know where you end and someone else begins. And the compassion fatigue, like I said, I didn't know that that's what it was called. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, there's times where I just don't want, I just, there were so, so much negativity, mm -hmm. you know, and there's so much like heaviness about dealing with people who are so close to trauma because you're kind of trying to hold a, uh, it's going to, you know, an egg that's about to shatter. Right. Because at any moment it could just go. Well, I mean, it's the issue about like the weight of knowledge skews your perspective of the world and those things around you. So like the case of dealing with, okay. say, PTSD, hypervigilance is a big part of that where you're yes. constantly revealing with threats and threats are always there and you're always preparing to respond to it. And as a result of it, you can't relax. Now, one mm -hmm. of the interesting like things about hypervigilance and it's kind of trained into combat instructors into self-defense mm. instructors because you're constantly scanning for threats and doing threat identification and escape yeah. routes so it's already there what is mm -hmm. different is like the the reason and responses as to why that is there and uh, but it is it's an interesting line to make sure you're not that you don't cross or i mean if you do it's just how do we manage there and the other thing that's also interesting is in dealing with all this weight of knowledge mm -hmm. is um, when we're making sure we don't displace uh, and project our own onto others. That's really hard in having that accountability yeah. because what it does is it creates some professional negligence on our part by not being physically fully present there to mm -hmm. impart this knowledge. And mm -hmm. that's, being mindfulness and aware of that is, yeah. I mean, it takes work. It really, it just does. Yeah. And being able to step back and see yourself like starting to get that fatigue before you hit fatigue is also super important. That's mm -hmm. where a lot of awareness comes in because you can't help people unless yep. you are taking care of yourself too. Yep. And with the hypervigilance, like in the PTSD and stuff, like, you're going to see that you're going to see so many like facets of what trauma can display when mm -hmm. you, when you're pumping someone full of adrenaline and you're pushing them into the fight zone, that's emotionally exhausting. Like yep. that is an emotionally exhausting experience. I get done with a seminar and I am in bed because it just took every emotion out of me to convince these women to step into their power and to fight. Mm -hmm. And when they don't want to, it's, it can be hard sometimes to, to, to be like, you know what, then do what you want, like do what you're going to do. And mm -hmm. I let go or whatever, but I well, feel I mean, like there's, there's a difference. Yeah. And I mean, it's also the same, like role-playing mm -hmm. these things because mm -hmm. like the, the mental accountability as a man stepping in to help illustrate and demonstrate how to deal with a man's violence toward a woman Mm -hmm. Having to put myself in that mindset of actually giving them the the response up into the point of the line, that tapping into that darkness and that potential for darkness can also be very damaging, if not uh, scary for a man. Yeah, and you can also trigger them, right? And the mm -hmm. moment that the per that this person is triggered, you bloss them. Yep. It's no longer fight through it because they're gone. They're hijacked by their amygdala. Even if they fought through it and they did a really good job, their experience of it was not what you would expect and not something that we want to put people back into. Yep. And it is hard. It is. It's, it's the hardest thing that you'll ever go through. I think to be honest, like to, 
put yourself out there into these situations, into these spaces and to come out and to be spit out the other side, a higher being Mm -hmm. like, it's just not something a lot of people can experience until you go do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that resiliency paradox. We build resiliency and and toughness at the behest of a lot of pain Mm. and a lot of trauma. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What about you?